Okay, we're rolling. Okay. Hi. Hi, welcome back to Can I Pod with Madness. Um, happy to have you here. Thank you for joining us. Um, if you're not already, follow us on Instagram, YouTube, Twitter, um, et cetera, et cetera. Give us a like, follow, share. Um, comment if you want us to talk about anything. Um, comment if you don't want us to talk about anything. Or mind you, maybe maybe don't do that. But um, just say nice, positive things. Uh, come on, life's too short. Right, so welcome to the podcast. Yay. Happy Wednesday. We're recording this on a Wednesday. I'm not sure when you're going to put it live, but happy Wednesday. I generally do it Wednesday. Okay, so it's Wednesday. Hump day. So, oh, how have you been? Well, thank you. Yeah, very good. Yeah, thank good, you. Good to see you. Thanks for joining me. Yeah, thank you for joining me. <laughs> how are you? How have you been? Uh, good. Yeah, it's nice of you to ask. Yeah, good. You cut all that. Guess what we got this week? Metal Hammer. We got Metal Hammer, the international hard rock and heavy metal magazine. Okay. From January 28th, 1988. January. So it's cold. Cold. It's cold outside. You're in the sort of post Christmas slump. Oh, You've God, not yeah. actually, January the 28th, you might not even have been paid yet, uh, depending on when the day falls. Um, you might still be right at the arse end of January <laughs> with no money in your account. So it, it could be pretty grim, and therefore Metal Hammer's here to cheer you up with some Aussie uh, shenanigans. Well, let's talk about this cover, shall we? Fr- oh, well. Fresh blood for Aussie, <laughs> new guitarist exclusive. So obviously we will put a picture of this up, but I like this picture because it's Zach Wilde, spoiler, and he looks about 12, he, doesn't he? He looks excited, he looks young and happy. <laughs> he looks not like he should be hanging out with Aussie. Aussie. Feel- Ozzy looks like your Larry mum in this picture. <laughs> looks like your Larry mum. Uh, Our mums are never going to listen to this, so we could do as many as your yeah, mum jokes yeah. as possible, like uh, we normally do. We definitely will. Um, also in this issue, HM Glasnost, Kiss and Uri Heap live in New York and Moscow. Nice. Motley Crue cancel, inside story. Mm. Scorpions, there's always a mountain to climb. ACDC, Trident tested. <laughs> oh, that's good. Great White Bite Back. I get well, I get it, yeah. White Snake and MSG live. And they, they couldn't make No f- pun. <laughs> no, just with live. A snake, with a snake. No there's, no, there's nothing you could say about a snake. Uh, no, foreigner, on. all the inside information. Megadeth, live at Leeds. White Lion, waiting for the roar. Waiting for the roar. Also, Voivod, Mammoth, Magnum, Slave Raider, Ava Electris. Okay. And there's a free Mammoth and Slave Raider Flexi disc. Oh, well, we don't have that no, because we've had it secondhand. Not, so that not appearing the good in this shit copy. has been pilfered before um, it's been handed over to us. Okay. I thought that was an advert for Avatar then. This is Steeler Undercover Animal. You it, thought that was Avatar? Avatar? That looks like Avatar. It's an interesting picture, right, isn't it? Right, we'll put this up on Instagram and you tell me whether it looks like Avatar. It's sort it's... of panther-faced Yeah, but they are. Human. They've got the weird long nose. Human. Yeah. Yeah, that's exactly what sort they look like. blue as well, isn't it? That's weird. Do you think James Cameron yes. of James Cameron's Avatar ripped oh, wait. off Steeler? Well, I don't want to, you know, suggest such a, a thing, but... Well, he ripped off Roger Dean. Roger Dean tried to sue him. You know, Roger Dean, the artist. I've heard of Roger Dean. Painted that. Painted uh, all the Yes album covers. I've met him. Thoroughly nice bloke. But he, he tried to, um, I think he tried to sue James Cameron. Well, what because, was the outcome there? Uh, yeah, well, James Cameron's got really big lawyers. So, well, yeah, no dice. Everyone's nicked off Roger Dean. Well, everyone's nicked off everyone. There are no original ideas. Yeah, true. As you can see from, from Steelers. Avatar, from <laughs> Undercover the early, Animal eight, Avatar. Eight yeah. Um, Steeler. So there's an editorial from Dante Benuto, who's the editor. So not Chris, Chris Welsh, this issue. Um, and he's saying 87 was a good year for hard rock. It was in the charts. It was on the radio. It was selling tickets. And it was selling itself. Kiss, Bon Jovi, Europe, Whitesnake, Anthrax, Ward calls to look back on the last 12 months and smile broadly. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, it was a pretty good year for rock, he's saying. Um, but I picked out this bit of this article. Without wishing to get all too hand on heart, I think it's fair to say that rock music is the closest we have to genu- genuine Esperanto, something that can break down seemingly impenetrable barriers of culture, tradition, and temperament. 
common bond between those who unashamedly like it loud. I mean, that's all music. Yeah, but that, I was going to say that's all <laughs> any insert any genre on anything. That's all art, really. Um, but you get what you're saying. He's happy about rock existing. Yeah. Aren't we all. Um, yeah. So news stories. Uh, some What's about, the hot news? Some about poison. Poison inject the venom. Something about poison, but we don't. What you're not going to go into it? Oh, I'm, I can tell you, they've had to withdraw from their support slot with Def Leppard. Oh dear. Uh, they're apparently working on Swallow This, the follow-up to Look What the Cat Dragged In. <laughs> yeah. Did is there an album? Did they change that? I don't remember an album called Swallow This. I don't remember that. That seems a bit, you know, not that I'm a boob, but that seems a bit rude. <laughs> Um, as for the musical content, bassist Bobby Dahl informs us that this will represent a mighty leap forward for the band and include one cover version. I mean, it doesn't tell, doesn't tell you of what. Okay, good. Um, do you remember what the next album after Look What The Cat Dragged In was? No. What was Unskinny Bop on? That little, little well, I'm going to have to look it up now. <clears throat> but you, you are a resident poison expert. I know, but I wasn't buying albums back then. Uh, true. Um, okay, let's have a look at Unskinny Bop. It was oh, 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 Flesh and Blood. So it did have Flesh and Blood because Flesh and Blood is, although that's in 1990, what are you in? This is 88, so was there one before? Oh, okay. In between, um, look what the cat dragged in. If you and... haven't listened to Flesh and Blood, the album, you should listen to it because I bought it from a charity shop on tape. <laughs> And um, we were listening to it in the car and we were like thinking, because I thought I'd bought an album, but then we were thinking, oh, have I bought a best of? And like looking at it and it was like, no, this must be a best of because literally every song's a banger. Every song is a banger. So go and buy Flesh and Blood. It's brilliant. But there you go. Um, get it on tape if you can. Listen to it in the car. You know, have the real experience. Uh, the next one was called Open Up and Say Ah. Oh. Ah, uh, that's a bit better than swallow this, which is un unsettling unsettlingly aggressive. Um yeah. We well, have nothing but a good time, fallen angel. Your mama don't dance. Oh, that was the bang cover. Honestly, bang it bangers. Also, every rose has its thorn. The classic. So what's on flesh and blood? Right, I'm I'm bringing it up. Don't worry, you worry about that. Album boxy music. Shut up, man. So we've got um, Life Loves a Tragedy, which is a really good song. Um, Valley of the Lost Soul, Souls, Life Goes On, uh, Poor Boy Blues, Ball and Chain, Flesh and Blood, Obvs, uh, Something to Believe In, Come Hell or High Water, Let It Play, Unskinny Bop, Ride the Wind, Don't Give Ride Up an Inch, right. Honestly. No, wind. shut up. They're all good. Well, what's, the, what's your recommendation for best deep cut on this album? There, there, is, there are no deep cuts on this album. They're all top level, number one bangers. But say I've never of... heard this album, which I haven't, what would you recommend I listen to? And don't say End Skinny Bop, because obviously I, I know that. Well, you know Ride the Wind, you said. Yeah. Um, Life song? Loves a Tragedy. Yeah. Like, that doesn't sound like much, but it's like, shake your ass, dancing. Kick, kicking, yeah, kicking it's... tune, is it? All right. Yeah. That's, that's good. Well, listen to that. It, at length after this, so That's that we don't get sued good for copyright. Poison content for you, right there. Yeah, always good poison content. Brought to you by Canapod of Madness. Okay, so more if news. If Poison want to sponsor us or be featured at any point, we will happily. A Poison actually going at Oblige, moment? yeah, but without Brett Michaels. Oh, really? Yeah, Who's I'm singing? Some, I'm some dude. <laughs> Is it someone who looks a bit like Brett hey, Michaels? Hey, dude. Um, there are no people who look like Brett Michaels. Uh, don't know. Not interested. If it's not Brett Michaels, it's not Poison, is it? Um, <clears throat> more news. Queen vocalist Freddie Mercury, you've probably mm -hmm. heard of him, uh, is to yeah. release an album with famed opera singer Montserrat Caballé. Oh my God, April. that's new news. That's news. Wow. Barcelona was still to come. Amazing. Are you a fan of Barcelona? Um, I don't mind it. I would never put it on and listen to it, but if it was on a event, I'd appreciate it. I'd listen to it, it if it came on the radio. Yeah. yeah. It's just, you know, I'd rather listen to Queen. I mean, that's fair enough. Say that about any Queen solo project, wouldn't you? 
so we got this big article about Ozzy Osbourne's new guitarist. Okay. So I think it's funny that Zach Wilde is a very kind of young, fresh-faced yeah. boy in this. But do you know what Zach Wilde looks like now? No. I mean, you'll have seen him. His name rings a bell. Well, he's he's played with Ozzy for a very long time. Does he still play with him? Yeah. He's also in Black Label Society. And that's him. He's like fucking Sasquatch. He's like Chewbacca. He's a that's huge... That guy. Yeah, he's huge Oh, I know his face. And that's, that's him. That guy. That's a little, little Zach Wilde. Little no way. 12 year, I mean, I think he's either 19 or 20 years. So oh he's very God. young. Oh, my God. I want to grow up to be that. Oh, yeah. I mean, he's, he's awesome. You picture a metal guy, you picture him. I've got the same hair. Actually, the um, beard and the muscles, I don't, I don't have those muscles. Uh, so they're um, interviewing the two of them together. Um, so Ozzy says, he's different. He's not one of the 3,000 Eddie Van Halens or Ingwe clones. As soon as I Shame. heard that Ingwe shit, they were out <laughs> the door. One Ingwe is enough. And I auditioned so many guitar players that played fantastic, but not for me. Fast, but with no heart, no soul. Just durr. It gets hard work to listen to one song. To two, after one song. Gary Moore's about the limit for me. There were some right wallies. <laughs> I mean, I've not heard that in a long time. <laughs> I mean, the temptation to do an Aussie voice, but I don't think you want do to hear it. that. There were some right wallies. You get the guy who walks in and he's all quiet and shy, and then he plugs in and starts sliding across the floor going bananas. Another problem is the guys who come along to meet you and they can't fucking play. <laughs> <laughs> Someone once referred to me as the John Mayer of heavy metal. So John Mayer was like the kind of blues guy in the 60s who were like Eric Clapton and, mm -hmm. you know, all those people in his band. Um, the reason I go for the unknowns is I don't want to, to deal with the egos. I want to get in, do my job, come home. I'm too fucking old to start dealing with. I asked for four M&Ms and I got six. So I put a note here. He's too fucking old and he's 40 at this point. Oh, he's a 40-year-old oh, oh. man. Imagine that. As I crumble into <laughs> dust in the corner. Um. Sitting here looking like the crypt keeper. I was in a hotel in Texas and a doctor was coming to see me. So I went to the coffee shop to wait and I told the receptionist to send him in when he comes. So I'm sitting there and this smartly dressed guy comes up to me and I thought, this must be the doctor. He says, are you Mr. Osborne? I said, yes. And he goes, put Jesus in front of you. I thought, fucking hell. And I'm running out of this place, <laughs> hurling tables aside. And all the people in the coffee shop got up and started going, hallelujah, put Jesus in front of you. My security guard, who's an ex-Vietnam vet, he wants to kill any fuck who comes near me. He's going growl, and they're all going hallelujah. It was like a fucking Fellini move. <laughs> so lots of very good quotes. Uh, does it worry you, Ozzy, taking a virtual virgin out on tour? I don't know how Zach Wilde oh, felt. Come <laughs> off it. Look at him. That guy's not a virgin. Ozzy, what I want to do before I go on a major tour is to go and do a small club tour under a name no one knows, the Four Dickheads or something. <laughs> We would go and see the four decades. So he's saying, again, like you get this often in these magazines, they mention something that you're supposed to already know about. So he's saying the Wormwood Scrubs thing we did. So I sort of presume they played at Wormwood Scrubs prison, right? Mm -hmm. uh, the Wormwood Scrubs gig was the first time you played together live. At least you had a captive audience. Zach. Man, that was wild. I was nervous to start with, but after a while, it's not so bad. And you don't picture them as murderers. We'd be playing, and Ozzy would be yelling, "I love you," <laughs> and the whole th <laughs> and the whole thing. Yeah, I mean that is something he did, wasn't it? He said, "I love you." Um, then one of them jumped on stage during Paranoid, which made us pretty paranoid. He started walking off with Ozzy. They told us afterwards that the guy had cut a policeman's head off or something. That's all we need. <laughs> they either ask for an encore or they kill you, right? Aussie. The funniest thing is they had a band there called the Scrubs with like two prisoners and two or three screws. I went to meet them. How that happened was I got pissed in a bar. Someone mentioned coming down and doing something and then and said and I said yeah. And the next morning I thought, God, what have I done? So anyway, anyway, there's this evil looking bloke. 
And I thought, I bet he's killed a few people. I'm imagining in my mind what he's in for. And it turns out he's a fucking guard. <laughs> the murderers were the nicest looking people there. It changed my mind about the death penalty, though, because I honestly believe being incarcerated in one of those places is for the rest of your life has to be 10 times worse than being hung. Wow. Mm. Yeah. Heavy. <laughs> Metal. Uh, he does talk about he's done a duet with Lita Ford called okay. Close My... Well, it says When I Close My Eyes, but I think it was eventually called Close My Eyes Forever. It's like a heavy metal love song. So I sang it to her, and the next thing I know, I'm doing the song with her. It's like a heavy metal version of Sonny and Cher. Nice. So, yeah, very good article, very nice article. What What's your general kind of feelings about Ozzy Osbourne? Um, like him. Yeah? Yeah. You, you're in favour of Ozzy. I am in favour of Ozzy, yeah. Yeah, he's all right, isn't he? Oz. <clears throat> like him. I um Bark at the Moon is probably my oh. preferred album because it's the one I actually bought myself. Yeah. Yeah. You know, well the... You put you did a compilation for me and had spiders in the night. Did that? Yeah, yeah. yeah. It is a good song that though. Spiders <laughs> in the night. <laughs> There he is. Freaking up the walls. So, uh, wait, did you just edit in some... Uh, yeah, that yeah, was, was uh, literally... Yeah, I mean, yeah. we'll get a copyright oh, yeah. hit for oh, that. Oh, gosh. Uh, next page we've got... it was me singing. White Snake Live. So talking about pure sex, which we weren't. <laughs> but we were talking about pure sex last time we saw David Coverdale in this magazine. Of, yeah. So he's uh, playing with the M Michael Schenker group. Okay. I always think think it's the Macaulay Schenker group. So yeah, I mean, there's nothing particularly exciting in this article except White Snake do a cover version of ZZ Top's Tush. Okay. Um, which I'm sure you know. And I'm gonna play you rather than describe what it says. Because I did find this on YouTube. That was a really good impression. I'm just upset that you haven't said that's really good. I mean, just take it as red. It was... Oh, you could say it once in a while. So Cheap Trick and White Snake and Bon Jovi that's playing a, Tush. That's a that's a lot of eighties testosterone on the stage. So before I play this to you, can you think what <laughs> any <laughs> lyrical changes might be? To this song that David Coverdale makes. I'm just going to play you the... It's, it changes Tush to bomb or something embarrassing. That looks like Michael Starr. Uh, I think that's the guy from Cheap Trick. It looks like Michael Starr. See, uncanny. Yeah. <laughs> Tits. He yeah, he's, tits. Renamed, he's, he's renamed he's, the song Tits. He's changed from Tush to Tits. Yeah, it wasn't subtle enough. Oh, Dave, man. Dave, like, Dave, Dave, Dave. If you're sir. David Coverdale, you don't need to convince oh, people you're heterosexual. God. Oh, does he like boobs? He should have said something because I think there'd be loads of girls who would be happy to send him pictures. Oh, what a dafty. Dave. Dave, man, come, come on. on. So moving on, <laughs> you're always going to think tits when you hear that song. No, I'm not. I am not. <laughs> about that they've got a show pre uh, presented by the Bailey Brothers, I believe, who make uh, a lot of appearances in the magazine. Over the page, mm -hmm. well, it's an advert for Def Leppard, but it says plus guest Poison. But didn't we just read that Poison weren't going to be supporting them? So this is false advertising. Well, someone hasn't updated that advert or they just didn't have anything else to put there. So they tell. If you wanted to go and see Def Leppard and possibly Poison at the Wembley Arena, eight quid. Oh, my God. Or seven quid. I'll pay seven pounds. Seven please. quid. I'll what seven, seven quid? What would that be in? Okay. So eight quid. Now, let's say seven because we're cheapskates. In 88, seven, only 17, 17 pounds. Oh, eight. my God. I'm I'd going. 17 quid to go and see Def Leppard, mate. That would be and awesome. And Poison. I'm not, yeah, I'm not convinced Poison's going to show up. It doesn't matter. Um, so here, 
is uh, Rock and Raffle. It's Ozzy again. Okay, good. Uh, posing with a sort of Uncle Sam top hat. On the 23rd of December last, Metal Hammer held a wildly successful charity bash at London's Astoria Theatre. Um, the offer is now open to you, dear reader, to dig deep and send us just one 50p piece or a postal order for that amount. You want to go out and get a postal order for 50p? I'll do that, yeah. You want along, to the post, dangerous. You along with a coupon. Okay, and what do I get for that? Uh, you'll be entered into a mega raffle with the following prizes. Okay. Ozzy Osbourne's full Uncle Sam stage outfit from his last US tour. Oh, my God, that's pretty good. This so like, someone's oh, mate, got that. This is that. like a maze. Yeah. yeah, well, it's just a raffle, you know. Motley Crue's stage leggings and knickers. Uh, what I... I'd opt out of the knickers. And do they I mean have... knickers they wore, knickers that were thrown I, at them? Well, men don't wear knickers, so... I suspect in 88, Molly Crew were not wearing underwear under their leather trousers, I'll... were they? I'll happily take the leggings. <laughs> uh, a selection of T-shirts including signed Bon Jovi, slippery worm wet shirt and a very rare, rare Randy Road shirt. And several Randy of Road Rudy Sarzo's own shirts. Um, Gone. So there's posters from Aerosmith and Warlock, a signed Black Oak Arkansas washboard. Washboard. I think washboard. Jim Dandy from Black Oak Arkansas would play a washboard on stage. Oh, Jim Dandy! That's You're naming one. so many songs from Days Confused. I know. Oh yeah, because Tush. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Tush, tits, you know, tush. tits. <laughs> We do talk about tits a lot on this podcast, don't we? God. This is the uh, more, tits, more than tits anyone cast. should do. Uh, Personalised motorhead drinking helmet. Okay, is that like one of those caps with? I think it might be. Beer? That's not a thing. No. A Castle Donington survival pack. Okay, yeah, that might be right. Um. I mean, I'll take the Aussie outfit, and then I'll take the leggings, minus the knickers. I absolutely. I want the washboard, mate. Someone out What's there has a got a washboard. Board, though. It's like like skiffle groups used to play. Yeah, it's that, like, a, like when we went to that thing and there was those men playing in that cafe. And one of them had like a washboard. And he was like as as a rhythm thing. Yeah, you, you, yeah, yeah. Okay. I believe that would have no use for that though. We we're, we're gonna have to find a video clip of Jim Dandy playing a washboard in Black Oak, Arkansas. And one thing I didn't mention is that I've been making YouTube playlists for every episode. So everything okay. we talk about and quite a lot of things that we don't talk about is going in the playlist so look for the pod with madness episode eight playlist i don't know what the fuck's going to be on there to be honest but well tush and tits 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 will be on there tish and tush tish tish, tish, tish and tush tish, tish and tuts. <laughs> oh no that's the name of this episode oh i'm gonna like a right wally now so i'm choosing wally <laughs> we're using to... <laughs> aussie aussie is uh name it's, cool uh... Historically I think, appropriate. I think, I've never said Wally in a like in a serious way in my entire life. Never, never, Have you not? never. You should start. Well, I might now. If he if he says it's okay, bring it back. Yeah, bring it out. So the next feature bring it is back to the eighties. So the next feature we've got is Trick or Treat yeah. with Ronnie James Dio. Nice. So basically, yeah, they just give a rock star, a bunch of things, and they talk about them. So we've got a, a Cornish pasty, and Ronnie is there. He's going to like that, isn't He's, he? I'm it, supposed to tell you what this reminds me of, cow plop. Oh, my God, Dio. Come on, man. A Cornish pasty is good. If I wasn't a vegetarian, which I am now, back in the day, Cornish pasties, man, they were good. <laughs> if you're American, you're not going to want a Cornish pasty, are you? That's not good. Everyone likes... Beef wrapped in pastry and some peas and potatoes. That's what's in it, isn't it? Good. Yeah, apart from the beef now, obviously. I'm a reformed vegetarian. Stick some tofu in there. But it's a... There's a, there's a real sort of... You can learn a lot from a Cornish pasty, like the way you they can, make no, it. You can, we can just end the podcast there. You can learn a lot from Cornish pasty. Right, night, everyone. If you're, so, um, if you're a boring so, person, look up Cornish um, pasties. It'll tell you about mining in Cornwall. So here we go. Um, so tits and you can learn a lot, lot from Cornish pasties. So see you later. See you next week. Bye. Uh, there's a photo. Everyone knows what Cornish pasties were made for. They don't. A, Not they everyone do. knows. There was a time it's I didn't that, know. But just because it's one fact that you know. 
It's like, it's like oh god, you're gonna turn the moon. You're gonna talk about the moon. You're gonna talk about the moon. Oh my god. Your fact about it, just give your the fact moon. about the moon. Right, we were, we were once watching telly and someone said, What does the moon smell like? I think it was probably QI or something. It was probably QI, yeah. And um I said gunpowder, because I knew that it smelled like gunpowder. Um I mean, I'm you know, hearsay. I've never been to the moon. I'm just going, you know, it's like when people show pictures on Facebook of Stephen Fry saying something about something just because it's his picture and some text. It doesn't mean it's true. But anyway, <clears throat> if we're led to believe what we hear is true, the moon smells like gunpowder. So I said gunpowder, and you were like, how do you know that? And I was like, I just know it. And like, cause the thing is, you don't hear stuff and then think, right, I better make a record of exactly when and where I heard this and so I can log it in my brain for when you weirdly get obsessed by the fact that i know something that you don't but so you were dead weird about it and you were like but how do you but how do you know but how do you know but but how do you know but where but where did you hear and i was just like i don't know i just know that the moon smells like gunpowder and that happened about 29 million years ago and we've never stopped talking about it since it's the one fact that i've known that you don't it's like the one thing in the world that i i know and you don't and you've never let it go <laughs> It bothers you to this day, and I love it. So, suck it. It smells like gunpowder. I've, Don't be jealous. I just thought, is yeah. it? You went to NASA, didn't you? Yeah. Did you? I didn't smell is, the moon there. Is that? I touched. Did someone tell I you? I touched though? a bit of the moon. No, it wasn't from. It, no, it wasn't from then. It was from something else. Mm. Um, well, I did go to NASA, and um, there's a bit where you can touch a bit of the moon. Again, it's like you've got to believe you, you've got to put your faith in the fact that these things aren't bullshit, and you're just touching some, <laughs> just some bits of car. Up the gravel yeah. from the car. Park. Who knows? But the, the funny thing about it is, you've got to put your hand in a slot, and then so in a slot, imagine you put your hand now in it like a letterbox, and then you have to go up with your hand and then down a bit. And then you can touch it. So it's it's so that people can't, you know, grab it and claw it. And, you know, it's it's basically like some sort of, uh, sort of, you know, torture device to try and get this. But, it's, you know, it makes sense because well, people are awful. Why let you touch it then? If... But you can't, but so you can just sort of really sort of lightly touch it with your fingertips, but you can't, like, scrape it. You can't Can get... you see it? Oh, yeah, it's in a big glass Perspex box and it's flat. It's completely flat so that, you know, you can't knock right. bits off it. But so, yeah, you have to go in, up, and, like, down with your fingers, which is, you know, if you've got bad fingers, you'd never be able to do it. But, um, yeah, but so if you go to NASA, do that. It's really cool. It's a good place to go. Recommendation there. Yeah. Uh, so the other objects are a packet of curry powder, a bottle of wine. I thought we were still talking about the Omaze, 80s Omaze thing. I was no. thinking, what? Then you can't. <laughs> I've forgotten. I mean... I'd forgotten they would move them to Dio, right? What you, do you think of curry powder? Um, Oi! This reminds me of my favourite food in all the world, Indian curry. You're going to cook this up later. It all started in the Black Sabbath days. Tony Iommi and I always used to go off and have the hottest curry we could find until we realised it was stupid. We couldn't taste anything. I guess it was all macho bullshit. Take your fork and stick it in the curry I and it stands it up and you're all right. guess it was all macho bullshit. That sums up a lot of things in the world, doesn't it? <laughs> so they ask, so real, me, real men eat hot curry. And he answers, no, real stupid men eat hot curry, I tell you. Oh, bloody love Dio. Uh, toothbrush, he's doing a kind of funny Hitler impression, isn't it? Is that funny? Well, <laughs> I mean, thanks for adding that in just as I said I love Dio. But... I don't think he's supporting, you know, well, no, the Nazi he's not. party. Um, a copy of Outrageous Tales from the Old Testament, which is a comic I seem to remember. A picture of Black Sabbath. An article on the Reagan Gorbachev summit. Interesting. So yeah, all sorts of things. Um, and there he is, uh, looking very small. But it does mention the topics could be covered were numerous. The aftermath of the Stars Hear and Aid charity project. So have you ever heard Stars? No. So Hear and Aid was basically the heavy metal version of Band Aid because someone noticed that there was literally no heavy metal people invited to be on Band-Aid and or USA for Africa and yeah. Steve Perry, but that didn't really count. So um, they got together. I think I think it was written by Jimmy Bain and Vivian Campbell, but it was definitely a Dio project. It sounds exactly like a Dio song, and there's like all sorts of people on it, like um, 
Rob Halford's on it. Hi, this is Rob Halford, the beast from Judas Priest. Mm-hmm. And there's, there's a, I was watching the video today, and it's fine. But because they've got oh, about... a glowing recommendation there. Sit on Google. Well, you know, it starts off, it sounds like a Dio song. They're singing about touching the rainbow, right? Which yeah. is good. I approve of touching the rainbow. But, like, because they've got about 38 guitarists, they all take a solo. So okay. it's just the same two bars going over again with lots of willy, willy, willy over the top of it. Okay. Um, right. And it just goes on for, like, 10 minutes. And there's a whole documentary about it. But, you know, fair play to them. Sounds okay. It's got two members of Spinal Tap. Uh, they asked us to do the leads, but like I said before, you know, I didn't want to blow these other blokes away. You know, I've been doing this a lot longer than they have. You know, I've got pipes. I've got pipes. I haven't used yet. He could break the. I haven't board. located them yet. He could break the board in there. You know, yeah, it's okay. really it's an Ingrid Malmsteen person. You know, and once you get the hang of his name, you know, he's like he's really incredible. I really did. I bought his album the other day, and I just I threw my guitar out. I said, why bother? And why bother, you know? Use it as a coffee table, you know, because I can't play the thing like that. He's great. I like the way he puts Ingwe J. Malmsteen on his album, so you know you don't confuse him with all the other Ingwe Malmsteen in the business. Nice. Um, yeah, loads of... I mean, people I feel I should kind of half recognise. Uh, Dokken nice. is, is there. And Mick Mars, and, Mick Mars and Vince Neil are there. Just like, a, you know, like if I had a party in my backyard, this is who I'd invite anyway. We're not these evil people just out for sex and drugs and money. We don't sit back in the limousines and count our money each night. But I guess Tommy and Nikki were just fucked up that weekend. <laughs> so she couldn't find the way there. I'm Tommy Lee. Nikki Six and Molly Crew. God damn it. I'm, I'm Tommy Lee. Tommy Lee in the... So... I'm telling you, God damn it. Do, if you've do you want me seen... to leave that in or do you want me to cut in the actual thing? Leave it in because it's exact. It is exact. Um, We've watched that so many times. Yeah. We? Watch it and... Hey, I'm Tommy Lee. And I'm Nikki Six and Molly Crew. Ah, oh, damn it. Oh, man. Fuck, I hate that. I'm uh, I'm telling you. I'm God damn it. <laughs> I, like, I like the fact that a rhythm section of a band is meant to be perfectly in sync <laughs> and they can't even say, say I'm, I'm Tommy, Tommy Lee, Lee, I'm Nicky I'm Six, Nicky Six. And we're Motley Crue, God damn it. Uh, so cr- the crew off the road. Nice. There's another article about the Motley Crue. Um, Christmas. And it's t- <laughs> Hi, I'm Christmas. <laughs> uh, it talks about them cancelling gigs. You're not the Christ shit. So we're going back to talking about the dirt. We are still reeling from our The oh. Dirt cast, which uh, we did uh, last time. Do you know what we didn't talk about? What's that? Well, so there's The Dirt, right? Yep. There's Pam and Tommy. Yeah. You might call it the Motley Crue Cinematic Universe or the Crew universe yeah. right? We didn't talk about Hot Tub Time Machine because Hot Tub Time Machine ends – with one of those guys has replaced Vince Neil, and it ends with yeah, the video so, to yeah. Sweet Home. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> with Lugal, the guy. L- L- Molly Lou, yeah. He uh, cre- created Lugal. Lugal. Yeah, yeah. And so Tommy Lee, uh, and in fact, all the members of Molly Crew are credited in that movie. But do you know who else is in that movie you might have forgotten about? Sebastian Stan. When? So, Sebastian Stan is the kind of frat boy soul in Hot Tub Time Machine. He's like the villain of the piece. I mean, is he, does he like? Yeah, show me a picture. I don't remember him. I was thinking about Chevy Chase a lot then. My, my mind was Chevy Chase. He's obsessed with Russia and the Cold War, and at one point he goes, "America, America, I'm an American." There what? He is. What? That's him. We've got, no. an advert, we've got an advert for the Velvet Eyes. Well, suck it, Hotel Chocolat, because you're already boy. Yeah, I see you, Chaz. Thanks. Oh, no way. No way. No way. Oh, you remember, right? Way. Oh, my. No way. Is that Winter Soldier? No. Uh, you don't fancy him anymore, do you? I do not. This is like Snape all over again. Oh my gosh, no. Oh We're... my, turn it off, turn it off because you're going to ruin it. Oh my God. This is making me want to watch this again, but. I mean, also... it is good, isn't it? Very then we, then we need to watch. 
Winter Soldier when he's a sexy, futuristic goth, cyber goth. <laughs> or when he's uh, the second cinematic Tommy Lee. Oh, yeah. No, I forgot about that, but he's... Okay, yeah. so, yeah, kids, check it out. Uh, the third third part of the oh, Motley Crue cinematic universe. Wow. Um, this this article also mentions Matthew Tripp. Okay. Um, they're currently being sued by Matthew Tripp, who claims to be the original Nikki Six. So that shit was still going it's, on. Yeah, no, it's the good thing about these magazines is you can really follow this through. The saga. Um, yeah. I, don't, I can't remember how it ends or whether we've even got magazines that sort of cover the sort of unofficial, official end of that um, situation. But well, they... it's, it's interesting that... Um, yeah, it's just it's it's a really interesting story. There you go, listeners. There's a there's a hook. <clears throat> Keep listening. Keep Can I pod with madness? You might find out what happened. You're, you're, I mean, God forbid you look it up yourself on the internet yeah. and find out. Don't do that. I mean, Let spoiler alert. I have googled it. it. Are you about to tell me that it's not actually Nikki Six and that it's just a guy pretending to be Nikki Six? <sighs> Stop it. <clears throat> Stop it. But you had photos and everything. He had the same face. Yeah, he had a slightly different belly button. He had, um, like, hair and he wore, like, a jumpsuit. So we got an article about ACDC. Yeah. Uh, the album Blow Up Your Video is out. Okay. Do you know what Blow Up Your Video refers to? Mm -hmm. I mean, this is the only thing I really remember about this yeah. album. Um, it's not meant to be taken literally. Oh, thank goodness. No doubt fearful of facing huge lawsuits and radio rentals. It's just a line out of one of the songs, but it means get off your backside and go and see a rock and roll show. Nice. These days, there's all these cable TV shows, the MTVs of this world, and people are getting used to sitting at home watching music on the box. That's not rock and roll. We made our living in rock and roll by getting out there and doing it on stage. I don't think TV, radio, or maybe even records can quite capture the excitement of a rock and roll band doing its thing in the flesh. You've got to be there. True. I mean, that's also almost like they're tell telling people to not buy their albums. I think I'd agree with that. <clears throat> well, not with not buying albums, but yeah. Yeah. Going and seeing live bands. Uh, do you want to put a David Roth, David Roth poster, poster up? Yes, I do. Looking mean, so moody and magnificent. We'll have to iron out that crease that's right across yeah. his face. Yeah. But, um... So some of this magazine has been ripped out. Okay. Which is... Posters? Who knows? So there's an article about uh, Ian Gillan and Roger Glover from Deep Purple. They've made an album. This this doesn't mean that the forthcoming double live album from Deep Purple will be the band's last. Far from it. It's just that, as Gillan sagely points out, you can't shag to Highway Star, can you? I think you actually could, but okay. I mean, unfortunately, we don't get to the pertinent point in the article. <laughs> Do you think of them like a sort of more sensitive version or just going at it at that speed? Going at it at that speed. Mm, fair enough. You, you can go every other beat. You have to go on the beat. I did, I did listen to some stuff from this album and it's not very heavy metal. It's, I mean, I guess it's music Ian Gillan wants to shag to. Good. Is he making his own music he wants to shag to? I guess so. And right. Why not? Well... Do you know what? Album of the month Focus is. your attention elsewhere. Um, no. Aussie? <laughs> Something Aussie related? No. We've already mentioned him. Dave Lee Roth. Skyscraper. Ah, okay. And I would have to say that's a fucking great album. So I'll read you this review. Yeah. Eat him and Smile established that Roth can handle himself without Eddie and the boys. Skyscraper asks that we take the man seriously, at least part of the time. I don't know about seriously. Uh, much of the LP finds him on familiar territory. You must take him seriously to listen to Skyscraper. But it's very intellectual. <laughs> the opener, Knucklebones, <laughs> finds I mean... Roth and his partners, Vi, Sheehan and Bissonette, exhorting you to get this show on the road. Then there's the first single, This, mu this Must Be Paradise. I, I, mean, I believe it's called Just Like Paradise, but I mean, I think that happens a bit like The Guardian. They just keep getting stuff wrong. This must be paradise. A gorgeous, rich gem that best utilizes the addition of a keyboard player. It's not until skyscraper, skyscraper itself that we find Roth embarking into new areas. 
Perfect timing brings Roth back to his musical mentor, Frank Sinatra. Is that true? I don't think perfect timing sounds like Frank Sinatra. Is that true? Uh, two, fool, two Fools Born a Minute is the closest he manages to get to a classic rap. <laughs> Again, I'm not sure about that. Um, be warned, the crown prince wants to be king. I mean, fair enough. Okay. I think that's a good album. I bought the album at the time. Yeah. Still got it on vinyl. Yeah. So I I don't have, oh, what was it? Just a Gigolo and California Girls, which was on the CD. Oh, uh, yeah, I like California Girls. Yeah. Girls! It's like all the same apart from when he says, Girls! <laughs> We're just cutting a bit of that here. California girls. Uh, there's a review of Sabat, History of a Time to Come, although they've written History of a Noise to Come. Oh, my God. Should we go back to the editor of this? I and think go, we should. We just, Dante got, Bonuto, get him on the phone. Uh, Eat the Rich, original soundtrack. Um, it's saying don't buy it because it's all stuff you can get everywhere else, apart from the title track. Um, Magnum, Mirador. It's saying you can get all these songs elsewhere. There's a there's a band called Lion Rampant, and there's, the album's called Up and Coming. Do you want to see the cover and see how it's written? Um, oh, That's, what do they mean? Up I mean, and Coming is written not spelt the correct way, but they've actually or, written Cumin, or, which is a spice. Yeah. <laughs> well, Up and Cumin. You get up and you have some cumin in some hot water and it really sets you up for the day. Is that how you like say term, cumin? It's like turmeric. Turmeric, yeah. I don't think people it's have heard of these, um... turmeric back then. Um, so there's not about mammoth. Do you know mammoth? No. Um, so I guess the bass player used to play with Gillen. I sort of recognise him. Basically, the, the gimmick of mammoth is they're all larger gentlemen. Mm, hence gimmick. the name. Oh, okay. Um, Nicky Moore, the former Samson singer who used to be a decoy for a whaling fleet. John McCoy, the bloated bassist who shot to fame and 20 stone in Gillen before temporarily leaving the music business to concentrate. I know they're making a joke about their weight, but are we allowed to make such jokes about their weight? That seems a bit Well, weird. Mark Putterford, who's writing this article, is definitely making jokes about their weight. I know, but is that okay? Well, it's, all they, it's literally all they talk about oh, okay. in this. Um, <laughs> Nicky Moore, looking like he just swallowed a beach ball, scratches one of his chins oh. <laughs> and answers philosophically. Um, he's asked, uh, are you fed up as being looked at as comic figures? Initially, that's only to be expected. We decided to, from the start to go with fat people because we'd got if we'd had a thin guitarist and a drummer in, we'd have looked really odd. So we went with fatties. Right. Um, I mean, I listen to that they're um, advertising the single All the Days, yeah. which I remember at the time because the video's got them hilariously working out and jumping on trampolines and stuff. It's all right. It, I mean, it's not great. It's, Their um, logo looks really um, naughty, skater, uh, rock. Really? Like, you could print that out and put that on a sticker and put that on your skateboard and on the underneath. Couldn't you? Look at it. It looks... Not out of place. It's a it's twenty five years after that. They, they were perhaps way ahead of the time. It's a decent logo. No, it's, it's fine. It's just it look. I can picture that on a sticker on the bottom of some dude's skateboard. It's a bit like a mouth, isn't it? Oh yeah. I it's to, yeah, of course. They've got a song called Fat Man, right? Uh, with. Jethro Tull have got a song called Fat Man. It's not the same song. And that's pretty good. That's a good sort of hard rocker. Okay. I don't know what the thesis of it is. Just that, Being you know, a fat man, yeah. I'm a fat man. Um, I'm a fat man. <laughs> just, so just as I was starting to think, yeah, they're probably all right. Um, they oh. go all homophobic at the end of the article. Oh, well, bullshit that fucking shit off the crap. <laughs> yeah, one band. Let's not, let's not give it airtime, mate. Okay. I was going to ask about that. No, nah, mate. Okay. So, video reviews. They can go fuck themselves. Because, yeah, no, wait, maybe don't stick that bit in. No, don't approve of that kind of behaviour. No, it's not. I mean, it wasn't right then. It's certainly not right now. Um, But there's an article 
well, video review, Magic Years, Queen. Okay. Um, so I thought this was interesting. Magic Years, I remember it being on telly, and it was this really sort of long history of the band. Um, I mean, to quote from the article, Bob Geldof says, they're the most unlikely band. You have this hippie guitar player who wears white clogs and long hair. You've got this very trendy and good-looking drummer. You've got this outrageous lead singer with an amazing voice. And then you've got the classic bass player. Don't really talk so, about John Deacon. No. Uh, so I think I get the feeling that this video series, because it was like three volumes of it, it was a bit like sort of grabbing back some of their rock cred that they may have felt they'd lost. I mean, okay. do you remember that that letter that was saying, I used to listen to Rick Astley and Queen, and now I listen yeah. to Heavy Rock. Um, it's the, yeah, it's, I think at the time they weren't really thought of as a rock band. Even. Yeah, but they did do those videos where they were wearing like suits and ties. Was that the same sort of time? I think it was a bit after this. I think it was the miracle, wasn't it? So they got even it? worse. <laughs> there is no place on stage in the rock videos for a suit and a tie. <laughs> There's not. Queen or no Queen? Is it no? Um, so this costs twenty nine ninety nine for the video package. Uh, it's well worth shelling out for if you're a Queen fan. Um, as Freddie says ominously at the close, "Fuck today, it's tomorrow." Uh, if you're interested, twenty nine ninety nine is equivalent of seventy six pounds forty three now. So it's quite a lot to spend on a video, isn't it? That's loads. Yeah. Yeah, we don't see a lot of Queen in uh, no. in these magazines, but you know they've got a picture of Freddie in his leather gear. He's prefiguring Judas okay. Priest, yeah, um, rocking out. I think the late seventies. So, yeah, there's just you know stuff about Magnum. I read the article about Foreigner. It's not very interesting. Uh, there's an article about Great White. Uh, the one thing I remember about Great White is in um, Fargo Rock City. Chuck Plossman describes them as the blues-loving idiot in Great White. Mm -hmm. um, they did an album of Led Zeppelin cover versions. Um, oh, Kiss Live. Okay. Let's read you the beginning of this review. It's nothing sacred. You don't swear in church, you don't mock the afflicted, and Kiss start their show with Detroit Rock City. It's as sublime and simple as that. <laughs> Except this time around, New York's most famous foursome had decided to make a change. No, they didn't put the makeup back on or bring back her original guitarist Ace Freely, but Detroit Rock City wasn't the first song up either. They well, started with Love Gun. Well, when we saw them first time, it was Modern Day Delilah. Well... True. What did they play first the second time we saw them? I don't know. I'd had a wine or two by that point. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think um, the second time we saw them where they played Detroit Rock City at the, the end, is, though, didn't they? It's I'm I'm very glad on the first time we saw them they didn't play something I was massively interested in because it was so overwhelming seeing actual kiss in actual life. You couldn't concentrate on it was it was unbelievable. It was it's great. Actual, they were all on cranes, weren't they? Coming actual round. kiss, like actual kiss. So we're seeing actual kiss, yeah. like kiss. I've, I still sort of can't get over that. I've seen kiss, like kiss, kiss. I could, I like, I could do that all day, and it still wouldn't. It wouldn't be enough. Haven't... It wouldn't. Have... I think it was like in two thousand ten, wasn't it? Like. Kiss, oh my god, right? So, yeah, so kiss then. So, this uh article mentions Crazy Crazy Nights, UK's number four at the moment. Okay, um, the song that enabled every English speaking fan of the band to hold their head high in mixed company and have I Told You So tattooed boldly across their forehead. Okay, uh, I liked when they played. Uh, mm -hmm. Crazy, crazy nights when we saw them because it was only a hit in the UK and they only play it here, apparently. Mm -hmm. um, so they seemed a bit confused about having to play that. And he said, Last time we played this was Tap of the Paps. <laughs> he, he had, the, I mean, the good thing about that 
tour was that afterwards you got you could download like an mp4 of the concert like oh my god we're old right but um yeah, and he says so many funny things about the concert. Is um, I'm going out there to see you, and I can do it. And if I sound like Mickey Mouse, it's because that's how he sounds in real life. There's, Obviously, you know that. But there's a YouTube supercut of all the stupid <laughs> things he says between songs. It's so good, so good. I just listened to um, Crazy Nights. Is such a good song. I just listened to Paul Stanley's audio book, his autobiography, yeah. and I feel a little bit closer to Paul Stanley now. And in this period, he wrote all the songs. Like Gene Simmons didn't write any of the songs throughout the 80s because he was trying to have an acting career and he wasn't that interested. He took credit for everything. We could um, do a an episode on your thoughts on the Paul Stanley autobiography. Uh, we could. We could tell me about it. I could. Tell you, but I might have to listen to it again and make notes. Listen to it again and make notes. Then. Um, it mentions "Reason to Live," the big ballad yeah, of the set. Reason to live. And tears are falling. Baby. Oh God, it's so good. I remember buying a Kiss uh, t- video from HMV, and the arsehole behind the counter was like, "Kiss," and I was like, "Yeah," you know, like shut up. I'm paying you like. 20 pounds at the time for a VHS wind your neck in I'm paying your fucking reason to have this shop open it's when we stop buying VHSs for 20 pounds is that that's when HMV it's the shitter isn't it but um yeah and he was like mm, Keith but it's like yeah and oh, shut up. I love some some comedian does a routine about People who work in record shops who think they're the rock stars. Well, it's like, I'm sorry, like, are you, what? Because oh, it was an HMV export and we all know how much HMV exports were because I think from like the time of about 1990 till I think probably 2005, I feel like all I bought was HMV exports, which meant the minimum you were spending was 20 quid on whatever it was, the minimum and then sometimes more for this, like for what I mean, it's painful the price you get it for now compared to the HMV export price. Although having the label on saying HMV export did make me feel a little bit special. Like, yeah, yeah I'm better than you. I actually buy uh, the stuff that not everyone's interested in, which is why it's so expensive. Um, I'm very special. I, I tried to buy a European Genesis tribute album. From HMV in Sheffield once, and the guy behind the desk just snorted his derision at me, and didn't even sell me the thing because they couldn't find it. Oh my god! So they, they had the case for sale, and I ultimately I got it, and it wasn't very good. So you can right, <laughs> but you know, fuck that guy. If you um, order stuff from HMV when the label came, it had your name on it. Please. So th- th- I mean, it's sort of too late. Prestige. If it- Prestige worldwide. If you want to do that, it's it's too late because I don't think HMV really properly exists. I think in our city it does, but it's really sad. I went into town and like it was in the spot of I think what was one say sort of either like Poundland or something. It's like in you know like HMV used to be like two floors massive, mm. you know, all singing, all dancing. Whereas this was like shoved into basically some sort of corner, and it, it was just. Really depressing to see because, you know, um, it's just something that was such a part of your life and everything that you um, yeah. were sort of interested. It was the vehicle for introducing you to a load of things and spending time looking at stuff in there. Yeah, you know, I'd spend um, hours in there just looking at stuff, yeah. not buying it, but just looking. So better to burn out than fade away. and. Um, HMV perhaps haven't gone that way. Not fade away. Not fade away was a um a thing that was on at like two in the morning. I think maybe on two chance. I don't remember the being adverts. So maybe BBC Two. Although why would it be on two in the morning BBC Two? Maybe it was a different channel. So probably mid nineties. Not fade away was um. I'm gonna have to look this up because I'm, I'm. I feel like I'm. It's on ITV. Not fade away. Not. Fade Away um, TV show. Not Fade Away 96. Sounds right. Okay. Um, 
So a celebrity chooses their favorite pop songs of all time, explains what, uh, what they mean to them, and the video or recording of a live performance plays. Uh, so that season one was 1996. Um, so there's Danny Minogue, Katie Purick, of course it was, uh, Belinda Carlisle, Bonnie Tyler. Um, yeah, but basically it was on like in the arse end of the night and it was it was so good because obviously there was, there was nothing else. Um, stuff like that would be nothing nowadays because you can have everything at the touch of a button, but when there's nothing on telly, and not fade away he comes on and you can watch music videos that are a bit weird i remember watching um um girls just want to have fun which i mean oh my god like it's like that's hard to find now i know like i know woo and uh modern but that was on and then i think um don't you forget about me was on and nice. um like it was just good because it was so like Obviously, like it says there, because it was celebrities choosing, it wasn't like, I mean, apart from Ghost when I fun, it wasn't your know, obvious, obvious stuff. So it was, um, and it was good because you thought, you know, it's cool, you're staying up late. Um, well, I used to stay up late to watch Raw Power. Never watched that. That was a heavy metal show, and we, I think for this, we should watch some of them because it Raw was Power. around about well, this. Raw Power's not Fade Away. There was Raw Power and Noisy Away. Mothers. Noisy you know, Mothers. Yeah, how, how was Mothers spelled? I think M U T H A S. Hey, speaking of mothers, um, <laughs> it's Mother's Day coming up. It's, it's Mother's Day coming up. No, <laughs> just just tell me, your mum you love her. Me, All and right. a, me and a friend in school. You know how you do that thing where you say something and you say that'd be a good name for a band. Yeah. Um, we came up with Mother Tongue would be a good name for a band, and then our album would be Off the Dirt Track, and I've never forgotten that. So Mother Tongue would be spelled Mother Tongue exactly as you'd imagine it would be spelled with umlauts and shit all over the place. Um, and off the dirt track would be our um, album. And honestly, like I think to this, like that's that idea is probably twenty five years old. And I, it's no, they, they've spelt it Mother Tongue. I've, I've got some bad news. No, you're, t- you're trying to show me that there's a band called Mother Tongue. Mother... Californian alternative rock, right? Blues, funk, and right. soul. Yeah, no, that's kind of the angle we'd be on. Yeah, but because off the dirt track is obviously blues soul, but they're spelt. Mother tongue. So how are you spelling mo- M U T H A T U N G with loads of marks everywhere. Just sticking them out wherever you Mother want. Tongue. Mother tongue. Mother tongue. Oh shut up, They're man. On Twitter. Shut up. Okay. So the bad news is you're telling me that there's a mother tongue. Yeah, but the thing is Mother Tongue music, singer songwriter. Yeah, I'm sure there is blah blah blah, because like I said, there's not an original um thought nowadays, but I we came up with this in um, about 98, 98. So I just walked up the stairs, which is why I'm sort of breath. Um, walking up the stairs is a, to work out. Okay. Find out, we'll find out when they started and then maybe, but. Oh. AOR, melodic rock. Oh, mother, mother spelt right, but tongue, T-U-G, T-U-N-G, mm. bedroom eyes. Well, <laughs> I, mean, I mean, I don't know what it sounds like. It's going on the playlist. Yeah, save. Um, but anyway, yeah, so I can't remember what got us on to um, Mother Tongue. Mother Tongue. Don't try, but, um, we were talking about mothers. We were talking about noisy mothers. Noisy mothers. The show, the TV show, which was raw, raw power. Changed to rock power, and then I think it was Noisy Mothers. Right, and it was and like it was okay. it was on at like okay. one thirty in the morning on a on a yeah. Thursday night or something. Crusher Jewel was nice. on it. Um, Phil Alexander, I think, was on it, and one episode was presented by Wolf Spain. Wow, pretty cool. So there you go. But I think yeah, yeah that's the end of that's well, the thank end you. of. Thank you. Thanks very Metal much. Hammer. Thanks for. Looking into Metal Hammer and researching that for us. That's a, that's a solid hour. Appreciate your hard work there. Thanks. Um, and, yeah, so don't forget to follow us on Instagram, Twitter. Um, you can watch watch us. You don't have to watch our faces. Um, it would just be images, but the sound on YouTube. Um, we would appreciate your love over on any of those platforms. And even if not, we appreciate you listening anyway. So thank you very much for joining us. And... Let us know if there's anything you would want us to talk about in the future. Thanks very much. Like and subscribe. Hit that notification button.